Hi and welcome to Linkage and Crafts Needle Felting Tutorials. Now if you are starting from scratch um, with your needle felting journey then you are probably pretty bamboozled by the array of wools and tools and accessories that are out there. Now you can see a big pile of, of wool and accessories in front of me here but you don't need all of that so I'm just going to push that to one side for now and show you what you do need. So all you need to start with is one or maybe two colours of wool for a little bit of contrast. Now on the hair here, as you can see, we've got a grey and we've got a white and that's it. So you just need a couple of types of wool, one even if you're just practising. The other thing you need is a felting mat. We'll get rid of all of these because we don't need any of those. Let's pop them all over here. And this is a foam felting mat. There's lots of different mats and there is a video tutorial which I'll pop in the link for you which talks to you about felting mats. But there are um, a few types of felting mat. This is a foam needle felting mat. So this is um, it's an upholstery foam, so it's quite firm. Um, the sponges that you might use in your kitchen or for your car are not very good because they tend to end up in your work. But if you are using something like that, or you want to make sure that your foam lasts and lasts, what I always suggest is that you pop a little felt or material topper on top. And that will just extend the life of whatever mat you're using. It could be um, a hessian mat here which is filled with rice. Um, if these are thick enough you can actually just use those on your own, on their own and there's no need to actually use any foam at all. So that's item number two. You don't have to have that but I do suggest it. I mean if you've got some craft felt um, in, your, in your sort of craft box that you can use or some sort of suitable um, material, um, a little bit of thin felt here, anything is fine as long as you can felt on it and it protects your work surface. So you've got your wool and you've got your felting mat and a topper of some sort. And then all you need is a felting needle. I would advise to have a second needle as a spare because um, they can break, especially when you're just starting. And there's nothing worse than if you have just sat down and you're cracking on with your needle felting and your needle breaks. And then you have to order one, you can't just pop out to the shops and buy one. And then it's just really frustrating. So I always recommend that you have a spare needle. Again, um, there is a section on felting needles which you can refer to and I'll pop the link down below. So this is just a standard 38 needle. I would say a medium, you might see it referred to as a medium, but it's a good quality one. It's, uh, it's a European needle and it's really good quality. And as you can see, it's quite, you know, it's quite firm. There's a little bit of bend in that, but this is what I always recommend. And I use this for most of my projects all of the time. These are also in my needle felting kit, so I always put two of these um, in the needle felting kit. So 30, this is a 38, a 36 would be okay as well. I find um, 36 a bit robust for me, but um, I, so I like the 38, but 36 is fine. It's sort of horses for courses, really. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good needle. And then if you wanted to later on, I've actually bent this one, but I'm still using it. Um, as you can see, that's a size 40 so the higher the number the finer the needle and this you would probably use for some fine surface detail where you don't want to to press in the wool that you've already felted um, if you're adding eyes mouth face details so as you can see there's more bend to that so those are uh, that's basically it so all you need to start is your wool your mat and a needle or two and that is it that is all you need you don't need any more of that you can you know you can try out all the other things later on but just getting going don't get yourself overwhelmed with the the equipment that is out there because there's so much of it um, so as for wool again that's down to personal preference but this hair is actually grey Jacob wool top and that's a white Jacob wool top that I've used for the um, 
for the little accents and detail and the little tail at the back. Now wool top and then this is a carded wool. So the difference between the two is that a wool top when it's processed is brushed in the same direction so you've got nice long straight lengths and when you pull it apart like that it pulls apart really easily and it still stays in those nice long lengths. A carded wool is exactly the same wool but it's just processed differently so it's carded in lots of different directions so what you will find here is that carded wool when you pull it apart the fibres are much shorter because as I said they're brushed in lots of different directions so you will work out and find out what wool you prefer to use I have been using Jacob wool tops since I started needle felting in 2013 and where people get confused with wool tops is that a lot of people start 3D needle felting with merino and merino is a beautiful wool it, it, it can be used for needle felting but I don't advise when you start that you or when you're doing a three-dimensional project that that is the core of your project because it's a really fine wool and um, it takes longer to felt and it tends to leave a lot of needle marks and especially if you're new it can be really frustrating to work with so what you're looking for is a coarse wool top and again um, you'll see all the different numbers, there's, there's microns for wool but I won't even go into that but you want something that's nice and coarse and felt really easily and again the British wool tops or wherever you are in the world you know your local wool um, aside from merino which is a fine wool as I said um, will suffice really well um, on my ultimate blog guide there is um, an actual there's a post there and you can actually read through all the different types of wool and there's, there's a little handy chart which you can refer to and that just makes it really easy for you again I'll pop the links below so that's it really you know you've got your wool you've got your mat and you've got your needles and you are good to go you are ready to start needle felting